Hello, my name is Robert Pearson, and I'm focusing on how to have a revival based on Pentecostal experiences and intellectually sound doctrine and challenges. And so my idea, I hopefully got this from the Lord, is that um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit always manifests the true presence of God. And so that's a type of proof of the validity of your Christian work, your Christian doctrine. Um, if you can speak in tongues, if you have um, divine healing, if you have gifts of prophecy, um, those things would go great with a intellectually sound doctrine where um, all truth is God's truth. Uh, there are a lot of people today who say, you can't do this, you can't do that, it's not Christian. These people sometimes say very crazy things like the end of the world is going to be happening in the 1980s or Obama is the Antichrist. Um, and so um, I think they throw a lot of heavy burdens on men's back, which, which is Jesus told us not to do. And so basically what I'm trying to find is um, a theology that incorporates groups like um, Lutherans or Methodists uh, as a type of additive to a very biblical focus. And I'm not saying that Lutherans and Methodists or Catholics are not biblically focused. I'm just saying that um, when you think about the denominations that really tout being very Bible-centered, um, they often have an anti-intellectual climate to them. Um, one of the biggest things is, is that you can't do yoga and um, God made the body, and so whatever way you put the body, um, if you're not saying it's related to some weird mystical idea, it's, it's not against God. Um, God wants our bodies to be strong. Um, standing on, the he on your head is not going to cause Satan to enter your body. Um, the Holy Spirit um, is in people who are believers in Jesus. And um, those types of uh, practices um, aren't necessarily evil. There's a lot of Christians who are into martial arts and they have Christian martial arts associations. And if they spoke in tongues, um, that would prove that the Holy Spirit is in them. And if, if somebody is um, throwing a heavy burden on someone else, that hinders where the gospel can go. And that becomes the culture of man's wisdom and not the culture of God's wisdom. And so I have a few tenets that I, I read when I focus on this. And the first one is God always desires revival. The second one is the problem of not having a revival can only be solved at a higher level than it was created at. The third is revival does not happen only because we do not have the wisdom to cause it. He who wins souls is wise. And the fourth one is revival will happen when we can find new bottles to put the new wine in. Um, that's basically like saying if you have a lot of great ideas and you're on fire for God um, You want to do a lot of things often That fire can be extinguished and Jesus I, I think was referring to that by saying You know if you put the new wine in old bottles the old bottles will burst and so you know You're gonna have to research what uh, the Bible scholars um, Mean by that verse, but I've always lately been thinking that um, when you have a lot of new, newness ide of ideas in God and you want to really bring the light of God to people, um, sometimes it gets kind of stifled. And, but I'm also very into the local church. Um, I don't believe in um, being divisive in a church. I don't believe that if you do a lot of community work um, that you have to get a new pastor, if the, you know, the church grows. and You have to always build up... Um, authority that God has in place because there's a lot of good reasons to go to a church and that leads to the fifth one it's a ministry to go to church and that should be a predominant theme of a new revival um, the present leadership should encourage a new revival and they should for their churches to remain prosperous so to sum this video up um, I believe that you can have very intellectually sound 
theology uh, based on psychoanalysis or uh, brain science, um, you know, deep breathing, uh, building up attention, and all these things. And the Holy Spirit can be in you and give you a witness. Um, Self-control has been not one of the, the key um, themes of the modern church, uh, at least in America. And the church in America has been very influential around the world. And so um, I base a lot of my teaching thoughts on being a, a book collector and looking at uh, old books that um, show you how America was looking at Christianity 200 years ago, 150 years ago. And often the way, the, a lot of the things that they talk about, we don't really talk about as much today. And a lot of it has to do with um, self-control and a sense of duty to each other. And um, I think a lot of those ideas are, would be very welcome today if people just really understood what they are. And that's all I have. Thank you.